You're only telling the story if it's your memoir, your experience. Otherwise, you're telling the story from the point of view of the, one of the characters. Okay, so um, so, you, so there's the if <clears throat> if you are a party outside of these series of events that make up the story, you have to know, and your listeners need to know whose point of view is being delivered. But through whose eyes and perception are we hearing the story, i.e., the series of events? So I'm telling the story. It's not my story. It's one I heard. Um, this someone is a character whose point of view we're getting. It is this someone's story. You at the campfire are delivering it to the campers. You're the messenger in a way. So people think, well, I'm telling the story, so it's my point of view. No, not necessarily. Okay. So rules to follow in point of view. Consistency, make it easy to read. So it's one, say, usually one point of view in a short story so that the, the reader is not going to get confused. This is that one person. It's the you know, young woman who has been, who was lost who, or abandoned, and she has no money, and she's going to tell the story of how things unfolded. I'm going to say, you know what? I heard this story about this young woman who was abandoned and had no money. And she said out loud, I wish I could win a lottery. And so I'm going to tell how she progresses, okay? So um, usually stick to one point in, in a short story. Um, it can change, okay? And it happens in long fiction. Most often you'll see a change of point of view in long fiction indicated by uh, here, uh, indicated by Here's a paragraph, for example, then you space it, and in the next space you put three dots. And then you have a space, now we have another point of view starting. The reader knows right away when they see that, we're going to another character. Some people don't put the dots, the three dots, they just make a big space. And then the reader knows we're not confused, this is going on to somebody else's point of view. Dialogue can be from other characters, and the writer can describe what all characters are doing, but only the character whose point of view is dominant is permitted thoughts and inner dialogue and reflections. You cannot give another character, as a writer, you're describing the second character. That second character can talk, can act, can um, react, but it can't think. We don't want to get into their head in, in terms of thinking, because that's going to confuse the, the, the story. So only the person whose point of view it is, is permitted thoughts, inner dialogue, reflections, mental plan. We can write it all out. So Sylvia was thinking, I think I'm just going to pick up my stuff and go. And we write that. Sylvia was thinking, and we say that. I'm going to pick up my stuff and go. Um, Sylvia uh, was feeling really lonely. Her gut was just heavy with loneliness. That's OK. Point of view most easily gets sidetracked when the writer is immersed in flashes of excitement, inspiration in a hot scene. You're getting all happy and excited because you got something, wow. And you start writing it, only to find out you've switched from your view. It takes training. And I'm not exaggerating when I tell you it's a slippery, slippery little thing to hang on to point of view. Because it clicks out so fast, and you think, oh gosh, I've got this whole thing, I've captured it, and it's something <coughs> else in front of you. So you have to go back and rewrite it. Okay. In movies, and, and you'll uh, recognize it, and in script writing, which I haven't taught, but I notice in movies, point of view changes all the time because the movies are so visual. And they use a lot of visuals to convey the story. So you've got so-and-so here in this scene, talking, da-da-da-da, and then you've got somebody over here, the next scene, another person, da-da-da-da-da. So you'll notice there. Thank you very much. Oh.
Thank you.